Hello friends, my name is AJ. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to add custom commands to your Discord bot. And again, in this series, we have been coding a Discord bot in Python using the discord.py framework. So this will be a rather short video. I'm just gonna be showing you kind of how to add commands, how to call them, and then just kind of how to set all of that up. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, everyone, so I'm on my computer and I'm again in the same file that we've been working with in the last few videos. So in the last few videos, we got the bot setting where we set up the bot. We got a um, how to actually send something in response to something else right over here uh, using the on message event. Then we also over here added an embed, so we learned how to send embeds. And today we're going to be learning how to send commands. So for example, let's say I want this right over here where I say, what is the version? Let's say I wanna send this embed when I type in a command called version. So if I type in the command, then it gives me an output. If any of you have played Minecraft, it's something similar when you're calling commands in that game, such as give you know the player an item or whatever, you call a command, which is different from a normal message that you send. So if I go over here, uh, let me just not click that over here. I am in Discord, so I, I can type in what is the version, or at least when my bot is actually online. Right now, it's not online. If I call that, then it's going to respond. Uh, it was going to respond to me with that embed. But you know that is necessary. That's kind of more like a normal message. What if you want to send something that's not you know that cannot be mistaken as the um, as the message. Or rather, what if I want to send specifically a command so that the computer knows it's a, it that it is a command, and I know that I'm calling a command, and I won't accidentally send you know what is the version inside of uh, some sort of item. And generally, this also helps to break up everything away from that on message event because the on message event can be used for specific other things, and then you can move the commands to a separate thing. And not to mention commands give you a lot more features such as being able to see the exact context of how that command was actually called and you can actually get kind of the message that called that specific command. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say I want it to be dash dash version to call the to call this command. Then what will happen is it's going to tell that the dash dash was the prefix that basically guarantees to the computer that I'm trying to call a command. Then it takes the command directly after my prefix and then runs that command. And now what, by running a command, my computer then has access to the context of this, of this, of uh, how the command was actually called. So it'll be able to tell what, what message was sent specifically to call that event. Uh, for example, from that, you can find the author who sent the command, and you can see if they're authorized or not. You can figure out what channel that the command was sent in, and then you can send it again. You can send, you can figure out the ID of the message this way. You can add reactions to that message then specifically. There are just so many things you can do with commands and why they are so, so useful. So in order to do this and how to actually set up this version command is I'm going to go over into Discord or into my uh, Python file. And actually I don't necessarily need to, imp I don't need to add any more packages using the pip install method that we did in the first video. In fact, the only thing I have to do is simply add an import statement. What I can do is I can type from discord, discord dot e x t, like this, import commands. And what I'm saying is that from discord.ext, I'm importing a specific item from this. So rather than importing everything in discord.ext, I'm simply importing only the command section. That just simply makes everything smaller, it makes the process a little bit more manageable for the computer. Now over here, if you notice that how I create my client or my bot is actually using discord client but at the moment that we add commands we have to we have to basically change the way we create this client from client equals discord dot client to client equals commands dot and then bot just like that so we have to change it 
from you know discord.client to commands.bot. And then inside of the parentheses, you can type in command prefix equals, and then right over here is inside of this string is where we're actually going to put that prefix of the command. So if I go back over here, if I'm trying to call version by doing dash dash version, this dash dash right over here is that prefix. So to set that prefix, I can simply put dash dash right in the string right over there. And that's all I have to do for setup. Now I can actually add my command. And I'm gonna add my command up here, but in order to add my command is going to be a little bit different. If you notice over here, I did at client.event. This time, we're going to be doing at client dot, you may have guessed, command right over here. So client.command rather than client.event. And now actually with this, we actually also want to have an open and close parentheses and we want to say name equals and then add some quotes for us to actually import a name and set a name for our command. So basically what goes in the name spot is what's going to be after that prefix when you call that particular command inside of a Discord channel. So for example, if I want my command to be named version, right, dash dash version, I would type in version right over here. Now after my at client.command, directly after I want to create my method that contains the code that will run when my command is called. And what I want to do is I want to type in async death, just like that. And now I want to type in the name of my command, which is going to be version. And I'm going to have open, close parentheses, and a colon. This is very similar to all of these right over here, like on ready, on disconnect, on message. But the difference is, is that in version right over here, you want to type in context. That is a variable context, which is actually passed in to, that's uh, passed in to my actual uh, method right over here when the command is run. And what does context actually hold? Well, context is going to hold the, I don't, I don't want to use the word in the definition here, but the context of how the version was called. So for example, again, as I said earlier, I can get the specific message that called the command using this context variable that has been imported in. So what do I mean by this? Well, I can say, for example, uh, let's say I want to do this exact thing right over here. I'm just going to copy this code. So again, this sent that embed for uh, the version. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it right up here. Okay, that did not do it. Let's try that again. I don't know what I clicked. Uh, let's let's try that again right over here so what is the version and then copy just right click and click copy I'm not sure why my copy isn't working at the moment I'll have to figure that out and paste there we go and now I can uh, back indent this also if you're wondering if you don't know this how to actually remove indent you can just do shift tap all right so now I've added my code over here but instead of actually sending my embed in the general channel, let's say that I want to send it in the channel where the person called the command. So to do that, I can use this context, uh, this context object. So what I can do is I can just delete general channel right up here. And then instead of saying general channel dot send, how I'm going to do it is I'm going to say instead, so I'm going to say instead, await. And then this time I want to say context dot message and context.message accesses that specific message object. And I'm going to have a link in the description of the documentation so that you can see exactly all of the different, uh, per all of the different fields that the method message object has, but it is so many, you can access the author, you can access the different reactions on the message, you can access the, the, uh, the, the channel that it was sent in, you can access so many things based on this message object. I'll be going further and deeper into the message object in a future video. So I can say await context.message.channel, because again, now I'm trying to get the channel where the message was sent. And now I can do dot send and I can say embed equals my embed right over here and delete this other line. So now no matter what channel I send a message to that says uh, dash dash version, it's going to send it in the correct channel. All right. 
So now I'm going to save my code and I'm going to run it. And it says down here, Python 2.7. I probably want to change this to Python 3.8 or 3.7. I don't remember what I used. I think I used, uh, th this should be fine, 3.7.3. I'm just going to click the run button right over here. And let's see what my terminal actually says. So my terminal says, uh, let's see here. Okay, there was a little bit of an accidental thing right over there. Let's 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 resave and rerun. All right, everyone. There is one really quick thing that you do want to do right before you actually run your code, and that is inside of if you have an on messages commit uh, on message event like I do right over here. At the end of it, you want to add the line um, await uh, client dot pr uh, process commands and then message right over here, right? And you wanna, you wanna basically add this simply because when you are running your on message, or if you have a command and you have an on message event at the same time, both are gonna be running for the exact same message and to kind of prevent them and stagger them, you wanna make sure you add this, you add this line. And, and actually, I also recommend to spell it correctly. So process, uh, process commands, await, oh, client.process commands. So I'm going to save and run. And let's see if that, well, I'm gonna stop this and now I'm going to actually run it. And now you can see right here, over here, it should tell me hello world and I can do dash dash version. You can see that it sends me an embed right over there. And that is perfect. And I remember what I said is that with this context, with this context right over here, I can actually essentially create two or I can actually run it on any uh, any any location where I actually send the actual the command. I can basically write the command on any any channel, and it will still respond to me on that channel because I'm using context.message.channel to find it. It's looking for the message that I sent that ran the command find where I put it, which is dot channel, and then send a message there. So let's say I go over here and I create a new channel called test, and I go into the test channel and I do dash dash version, you can see that it's going to respond to me there also. All right, everyone, that is it for this video and showing you how to very quickly add commands into your Discord bot. If you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comment section below and I will try my best to answer them. If you like the video and you want to see more, feel free to like and subscribe for, for more content. And as always, thanks for watching.